So I'd like to welcome everybody today to the Shop Talk with Preservica. Um, we're going to turn this over and get started here in just a second. We'll give everybody about another minute to get logged in. Um, I know sometimes, you know, you'd think by now we'd all be experts at, at logging in and getting started. But, you know, sometimes you end up just going, um, you know, from one meeting to the next and, uh, we just don't always have time or we think, oh, I've got enough time. And then Zoom wants to do an update. So that's uh, uh, another uh, thing. So I think we've got a good start here. So I'm going to turn it over to our presenters today. So Gareth, take it away. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you for inviting us here today. So as um, as Lisa was outlining, welcome to the Shop Talk with uh, Preservica. We've Actually, going to be hearing from uh, Vermont, Vermont State Archives today um, on their journey with uh, managing agency records in Microsoft 365. Um, so if I just move through here, and I would like to uh, quickly introduce myself and um, also extend a huge thank you to Rick um, for for coming on and presenting today. Um, myself, uh, you may think, hang on a minute, that's an English accent, and how have you infiltrated this group? Well, there is a there is a really good reason. Yes, I am in England. I'm here in Oxford, um, but I have been working uh, quite closely with Rick and his colleagues on a project called Preserve 365, which some of you may have heard about. But it's looking at um, Microsoft 365 agency record transfer to the archives and how can we make that much more effective. So we'll come to come to that towards the end of today's presentation. But um, it does justify, I hope, my myself being here today um, and. Uh, as I said, a big thank you to uh, to Rick from Vermont um, State Archives um, for, uh, for for pulling this presentation together, for sharing their story um, with their journey today. Um, Rick, I don't know if you wanted to say a few words um, before we move on. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Gareth. Uh, it's great to be here. My name is Rick Jerome, and um, I'm at the Vermont State Archives and Records Administration. I'm a records and information management specialist, and um, I'm sort of in charge of the digital archive here. So that's my role and that's what I'll be talking to you guys about today. Thank you very much. Um, so Vermont um, uh, are a long time or long time Preservica customer. Um, they've also been uh, participating and uh, supporting us with um, Preserve 365 and been uh, trialing trialing those new bells and whistles. Um, so we might hear a little bit more about that towards the end, but um, yeah, big big thank you to to the team there for for, for bringing this together for today. Um, I shall keep this extremely brief. Um, for those who aren't familiar with uh, Preservica, then we are um, we are the uh, the the creator creators of the of active digital preservation. But uh, in a nutshell, we have been operating uh, around the world with institutions from all sorts of different industries, uh, public sector, private sector charities, international organizations, um, corporations, uh, in helping them preserve and protect their valuable uh, and critical operational records, um, culture and heritage, uh, and helping them uh, extend uh, their archives uh, and their reach into the communities. Um, and overall, our objective is to enable organisations and individuals with um, uh, with digital preservation needs, making sure that is as easy and as automated um, as possible. Um, that's really our big driver, and making it available to institutions of of all sizes and shapes. Um, we're very fortunate and very privileged to be trusted by forty plus. Uh, US government organizations, um, as I mentioned, keeping critical, permanent and long-term records safe and secure and readable over many, many decades. Um, and uh, one of the one of the key reasons that we're often often selected is not just for the digital preservation, but is for our security um, credentials as well. So um, yes, we're pr pr protecting a, an enormous volume of, of um, assets. Um, many, many different formats um, that we're ensuring that will remain uh, readable um, and uh, with offices in the UK, uh, here in Oxford and also in Boston, in the US. Anyway, that's a quick snapshot about Preservica. I won't ramble on too much about that because I think the main 
the main show is what uh, what Rick has for us. So if we move on to the next slide, Rick, you just give me the nod when you want me to keep going. Okay. Um, but I'll hand the mic to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Gareth. And uh, thanks, COSA, for having us here and Preservica for partnering with us. Uh, very excited to talk to you guys today about um, preserving agencies' records in Microsoft 365. So I'm going to talk about how we do things here in Vermont uh, currently, and then we'll transition a little bit into how we're hoping to improve our process in the near future. Uh, so a little bit about us first. Uh, Gareth, next slide, please. So uh, the Vermont State Archives and Records Administration, known as VISARA, is a part of the Office of the Secretary of State here in Vermont. And we're charged with administering the statewide records and information management program in accordance with generally accepted record keeping principles and industry standards and best practices to assure public agencies are systematically managing their records according to law. Uh, next slide, Gareth. Okay, so we're lucky here in Vermont that the state legislature has codified into law um, VISARA and what we're responsible for and specifically defined uh, archives and archival records. They've defined appraisal, record schedules, records and information management, and the statewide records management program. So there's no ambiguity when it comes to these things. Uh, next, Gareth, please. So uh, 3VSA 117 is the part of Vermont statute which defines the required services of the SARS statewide records and information management program. Uh, so I'll go through these and then we'll get to a lot of them in more depth later. But um, our program is uh, records management assistance to all local and state governments. Uh, we're required to uh, provide low cost, secure and compliant record repositories. Uh, and in that we have actually three different repositories that we are mainly in charge of. We have the digital archives, which is mostly what we'll be talking about today, but we also have our physical archives, obviously, and we have a state record center, which is where we house records uh, that are still in the custody of state agencies. Um, they're not ready or they're not the type of records that they're going to transfer over to us, but we have a repository that they can use. Uh, and then, of course, we also are responsible for records in uh, Microsoft 365. Um, we issue state standards and information government frameworks. We issue record schedules that govern the management, retention, and disposition of public records. And um, we take legal custody of state archival records, regardless of format, so our physical and our digital. And we're responsible for arranging, describing, and preserving archival records. Next, please. So we have uh, official record keeping metadata guideline and it uh, looks like it's a little tough to read here because it's kind of small, but this was uh, implemented in 2008. So it's been around for a while with uh, continuous updates, most recent in 2020. And uh, this guideline supports the interoperability, management, accessibility, and preservation of government records in Vermont. And it includes the interoperability metadata standard developed in 19 by Vasara, which is called V-Class, uh, the Vermont Functional Classification System. Next, please. So V-Class is uh, our classification system um, and it's a state standard for inventorying, appraising, and scheduling Vermont public records. Uh, it's a faceted classification system, and it breaks down the business functions and their supporting documentation into basic concepts, which are the facets. Um, and we'll get a bit more into how B-Class works. But uh, it's used to create all of our record schedules. So the record schedules include the core record keeping metadata. Um, which we refer to as VT Core, and it's for use in enterprise or statewide systems to facilitate records management actions, such as retrieval pursuant to public records and discovery requests, disposition, and preservation. Next. So uh, V-Class was based on the, the model requirement specification for the management of electronic records. 
which is uh, referred to as MoRec2. For those of you who know about it, uh, it's now ISO standard compliant. And um, this, we've included this little um, image here just as a, as a uh, if anybody's familiar with that, so you can see what we're based off of. Um, and we are standards based at, here at Vasara, so we are uh, ISO compliant. Next, please. So we'll get a bit more now into um, VT Core, which is our metadata schema and is based off of V class, our classification system. So VT Core has emerged in recent years for VT Retain, which is our digital, the name of our digital archive, and also for records in M365. So VT Core is based on Dublin Core, um, and we have six required uh, metadata elements for all records, all our digital records that we have in VT Retain. Then we have 10 additional elements that are optional, uh, can be used where they're applicable, where they're readily available, um, and some are only for certain types of records. So if we look at our required elements, we've got agency, which is the creating or transferring agency, uh, which is, well, so there, these are all based on the class um, and which are controlled vocabularies. So we have agency and then we have domain and activity, uh, which form the function of government that the records uh, are coming from. And then we have record type, um, public access, which indicates whether a record is open for general viewing or is uh, exempt from public inspection. And then we have a classification code, which is a numerical value that combines the domain activity and record type um, into a numbered code, which we'll see on the next slide. But then we also have the 10 additional, um, which we use when we're able to find this information on records. We have contributor, which uh, is a repeatable field, so we can add multiple people as contributors. We have a creator field, which is only used in executive branch records because it's the administration. So like governor's records, um, maybe uh, secretary of state records, the administration. We have year and date, uh, record ID, which we don't add record IDs, but they're like if a records if records have like a docket number or case number identifying ID can go there. Uh, a title, which is a free text field, um, jurisdiction, which can be applied. We'll see that a little bit later. And then uh, legislative session and act bill resolution are only for legislative records. And then a source location, which is only for digitized records. And that would indicate uh, like a box number um, where the physical record is in our archive. Uh, next, please. Kevin. So this table is an example of how we would apply metadata for a legislative committee record, um, a recording of a committee meeting. And this is an actual record that's in VT retained right now. So uh, you can see the first six are filled out right there. Agency, domain, activity, record type, public access, and classification code. This is a record from the Senate Committee on Finance. The domain, which is uh, the area of responsibility, is general because um, they deal with general government. We have more specific domains for other agencies. Uh, legislative records are legislating. That's their activity. It's what they do. And these are declarations um, from our record type uh, controlled vocabulary. Public access is general because these are open meetings to the public. And uh, of course, anything that we have uh, publicly available on VUT Retain will have a public access code of general. Anything that we have that's um, redacted or exempt, we we will still have in our archive, but we 
we can have the permissions set both so that the public can see it. And then the classification code you can see there, um, the FN100.1000 is a representation of the domain, general domain. Then the 1057 uh, is the number for legislating and the 032 is the number for declarations. So this record would be scheduled um, on the record schedule for a general legislating schedule. And that classification code is a numerical schedule identifier that tells you when you look at that code, you're looking at the general legislating schedule and then also declarations tacked on in the end. For this record, we can see we know the exact date of the meeting um, and the legislative session. And then we have two people added at the end as our contributors. These are two witnesses that spoke uh, during this meeting. So this is an example of a legislative record and how the metadata would look in our system. Next, please. Here's another example of a digitized record. So um, here at Vassar, we, we don't digitize records very often, but um, sometimes when we have a record set that has extremely high volume for uh, public records requests, we will digitize for access. Uh, so this is part of a record set of town lotting plans. And uh, you can see here, it's a way to see some of the extra fields that we can use and how we can use them. So we have our, our core six elements again um, at the top there. Secretary of, this is Secretary of State's records. Um, the domain is State Papers of Vermont. Uh, publishing is the activity. So those are represented in the classification code down at the bottom, FN 500.2075. Dot one zero seven four, and then these are plans drawings. Again, all these terms are coming from the V class, from the controlled vocabularies that we have set up within V class, and these are all terms that um, are able to be used across all of state government, all agencies. Uh, we've established that these are terms that are that are represent the business functions of all of state government in Vermont. So this record is from 1969, uh, and this does have an ID. These records um, have specific IDs, so you can see that field has been used. And then the title, which is our free text field, is a direct transcription of what's actually found on the record. Um, and we add the digital copy at the end. Um, in brackets for all of our digitized records. Then we have three contributors uh, contributed to the creation of this and the box number on the end, which also indicates that this is a digitized record from the physical vaults. Um, you could, we could look up that box and find that record right in there. Uh, but now it's been digitized, it's on VT Retain. This is the metadata that people are gonna be able to use uh, within the system to find this record much easier. Okay, next please, guys. So when we're thinking about M365, um, we're looking at SharePoint as a place where we're gonna try to be transferring records. So this is an example of metadata from another record. This is a uh, board of Dental Examiners minutes. We get a lot of minutes from um, boards here in Vermont, minutes and agendas. And I won't go through all the metadata again for this one, but this is one of the things about SharePoint is that we can use libraries and columns to add metadata. Uh, and managed metadata columns can be maps to an existing term set like V-class or local terms, um, or custom metadata can also be added as columns, which is what we do here in Vermont. Um, and these can be lookup columns that are mapped to an existing term set, which is what we'd use um, for V-class because we have our controlled vocabularies. And then 
um, none, of, none of this would be free text and uh, there'd be a controlled vocabulary that the metadata is all pulled from. Next, please. So the simplicity of VT Core and the widespread use of enterprise-wide or statewide systems like M365 is a driver in our digital preservation goals too. So we have these three goals uh, when we think about our digital preservation. We want to automate the transfer and ingest of inactive born digital archival records into VT Retain. That's the first. We also want to preserve in place active born digital archival records. And we want to integrate record keeping metadata for access and description. Next. Uh, so we've defined, um, this is a, a little small, a little tough to read, uh, but this is how we currently do things here in the state of Vermont when it comes to M365 applications. Uh, we've defined what types, where permanent records uh, can be held and where they cannot based on risk. Um, the state of Vermont has one single M365 tenant which is used by executive and judicial branches with minimal overarching governance. Um, so these, this, this chart uh, represents um, the different tools in M365 and how we use them with records. Uh, so the first column is OneDrive uh, where it's a, we use it as a personal workspace and um, it should only house transitory records from our general record schedule uh, of transitory. Then the second column is, is Teams, um, which is for collaboration and also day-to-day uh, -day operations. So we only want uh, transitory records in there or operational records, um, none of which should be archival. So no archival records should be kept at the state in the state of Vermont in OneDrive or Teams. Uh, the third column is Exchange and Outlook, which is used for communications, obviously. Uh, and we do expect to find transitory and permanent records, archival records in there as well. And the same with SharePoint, which is our final column. Um, so really, when we're thinking about transfers from M365, we're thinking about Outlook and we're thinking about SharePoint. And the schedules um, indicate that, the schedules that records should be found in. Next, please. So because, uh, because of COVID, uh, the use of M365 really skyrocketed here in Vermont, and I'm sure it did many places. Uh, more state of Vermont agencies were pushed to move from their file shares, which everyone was in, uh, to M365 pretty rapidly. So Visara engaged in two pilots, um, focusing on improving first. First pilot was improving records and information management for records creators, um, such as our state agencies mostly. And then the second pilot uh, focused on transfers of digital archival records into the state archives. Next. So the first pilot was an information government's application. Uh, and this was to analyze and prep, this pilot um, was to analyze and prep unstructured files for retention and disposition activities, as well as migration to other locations, including M365 and VT Retain. Uh, to be able to search across um, multiple systems and areas for all records held within an agency. Uh, this application could find, quarantine, and mitigate sensitive records and information that are exempt from public inspection copying. And it could be used to perform routine and ongoing records management after the initial cleanup, which something that be that is really helpful uh, for agencies so they don't have to continually do large cleanups. Um, so this was this was designed to help agencies with their records and information management, which would ultimately help uh, Visara a lot with receiving transfers uh, from these agencies. Next, please. 
Um, so our second pilot uh, was a, is an M365 connector um, for automation. And this um, pilot is to provide governance for retention and disposition activities in M365 and to be able to move or copy uh, records to BT retain. Um, it's to maintain record integrity and also include VT core record keeping metadata with related records on transfer. It's important to keep together and to be able to preserve in place for continued access and use by records creators. Um, this is really important for a lot of our agencies as uh, they sometimes will be hesitant about transferring records to us if they still have a business use and um, they may still be able to have access to them, but it may be a lot trickier and it won't be within their system. So this, this pilot uh, has that as a piece of it as well. So a connector like this um, between M365 and VT Retain would significantly improve our uh, current manual process, which we'll go into next. Can I just ask Rick? Yes. Is, this is Preserve 365, is it? <laughs> yes, it is Preserve 365. <laughs> You're right. Thank you. OK, uh, so problems. So anyway, this is our manual transfer method um, that we currently use for our transfers. Uh, so transfers from N365 involve um, the Vermont Agency of Digital Services, which uh, basically handles all of our IT needs um, and they liaise between us and agencies. Um, they're able to drop records into our Windows Files Explorer or they can open up um, other agencies folders so that we can transfer records that way. They can also grant access to SharePoint sites, libraries, and lists. And um, an important thing they can do is open up M365 eDiscovery cases, uh, which facilitates the transfer of OneDrives and Outlook mailboxes, which I'll talk about a little bit later as well. Next, please. So also part of our manual transfer process uh, involves coordinating with each state agency separately on what methods they want to use to transfer their records to the state archives. Uh, as you can imagine, this can be a sometimes confusing, sometimes long and complicated process of back and forth um, with an agency to try to figure out how the transfer will go. Uh, with no automated process in place. So it's different every time, which can be tricky. Um, it also involves manual weeding of transitory records and other records that are overdue for destruction under their record schedules. This can be very time consuming um, as transfers we get often include lots of transitory records. Uh, and we do have a couple programs that can help with this. We use BitCurator uh, for identifying duplicate records specifically. Um, but even so, with it's still a manual process and it's still very uh, takes a lot of time. Um, we also have to uh, enter metadata manually, um, and then we run scripts that uh, attach can attach the metadata to records prior to ingest into VT Retain. And then there's the manual ingesting process uh, into VT Retain, which can also be very time consuming based on the size of the transfer and uh, also the ban bandwidth um, for the actual transfer. So we have a lot of challenges with, with a manual process. Next, please. So as you can see, the cons outweigh the pros uh, when it comes to manual. Um, for agencies, um, methods can be difficult to streamline and standardize when they're not automatic. Uh, there are minimal incentives to the state of Vermont agencies to improve their record keeping in M365 um, and to preserve permanent archival records if there will be a loss of access. Like, like I talked about earlier, a lot of agencies um, 
maybe maybe have their own systems in place already uh, where they have access to their records it might be a SharePoint site um, and they don't want to lose that access or have to change how how their own agency or their constituents access those records uh, even if they still would have access. Um, and on transfer, the lack of a streamlined process and standards diminishes the availability, integrity, and protection of the records received. Uh, if we're constantly having to move records around, touch them, open them, look at them, um, diminishes the integrity of the records. And uh, it increases time spent on weeding, um, which I mentioned, also classifying, adding metadata, and also ingesting. And it raises the risk of incorrect metadata uh, when you have human input, um, typographical errors, and uh, the possibility of breaches as well if we have to hold on to records while we're processing them. Um, that's That always increases risk. Next. However, um, part of our manual process is working with a, uh, the Agency of Digital Services um, with the tool Microsoft 365 eDiscovery, which is very helpful uh, to facilitate the transfer of Outlook mailboxes and OneDrives. Um, so eDiscovery, through eDiscovery, um, records can be searched by keyword, by sender, uh, a number of other ways, which can be really helpful just to try to transfer only the records that are desired. Um, search tools within eDiscovery can help identify records with exemptions, and um, searches can be narrowed to specific records to transfer. So eDiscovery can transfer entire mailboxes or entire OneDrives, or you can search and only transfer the records that are, that are um, desired at the time. And then whenever you do the transfer through eDiscovery, uh, it creates an index of everything that was transferred. So this can be really helpful when transferring an entire Outlook mailbox, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of emails. Um, you have an index, you can search the index whenever you get a public records request uh, without having to download an entire um, PSD file with a huge mailbox and try to search through the records themselves. So we've had a lot of uh, success with eDiscovery, but it is still a manual process. The way we want to go is automation. Uh, hopefully this is in our near future. Um, VT Core, our metadata standard can be used in M365. Um, it can be linked, the metadata can be linked and used in SharePoint. Um, and added to columns in, in document libraries, which is what we hope to do. Uh, we can also apply record schedules um, by using Microsoft Purview. And uh, in that way, we'll be able to apply retentions and dispositions right within M365. Uh, then State of Vermont records officers can be empowered to govern and automate the management of their own records in M365, which is where we want to get to, a place where we can train records officers to be able to do this work. Um, and it takes a lot of the time and a lot of the burden off the archives itself. Uh, and it will facilitate a lot more transfers. Also, only records appraised as archival can be transferred um, by using automation, which is very helpful to not transfer um, transitory records and to eliminate the need for so much weeding. Uh, time spent manually transferring and metadata and adjusting records will be significantly decreased through all of this and errors and risk can be substantially minimized. So we are very excited for the next, uh, the next phase, which should be automation. Next, please. So as a recap, this is where we hope to go. We have on the left, um, a representation of M365 SharePoint library metadata. Uh, this is what it would look like in SharePoint. And then on the right, 
hopefully, we'll be able to automate it so that it, um, it as a record is transferred, the metadata comes over automatically, and it looks like that in VT Retain. So that's our goal. That's where we're hoping to go. And at this point, I will say thank you and turn it back over to Gary. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you very much, Rick, for that. Um, some really, really, um, really interesting um, detail in there about how you're going about this. And I know that you were um, keep keeping it focused on on um, what you guys are, are doing now and just touching upon there on the future. So uh, just a couple of points I wanted to um, clarify with you very briefly. Then what I was intending to do is show a very, very short video on Preserve 365. And if you're okay, Rick, just to ask you a couple of questions about yeah. your, um, your your current testing with Preserve 365. So, so first and foremost, BT Retain, that is that is Preservica, is it not? Yes, that's the name of our uh, public facing um, portal, our universal universal portal. Yes. Excellent, thank you. And then, yes, as you as we alluded to a minute ago, um, currently in in testing for um, Preserve three six five in our preview group, um, which I hope is you would say is going well. Um, it's going really yeah. well. Yep, we we are still currently in the testing process, so. Um, so yeah, so what I'll what I'll do now is I'll move uh, I'll move swiftly on. This is a very short video. I hope that we are, I have tested that there is audio, so I hope you can hear it. Um, just we'll just go through this in terms of setting context for what Preserve three sixty five is, because um, for those who who may not have have heard of this so far, ultimately this is trying to achieve what Rick was just outlining there towards the end about um, removing that manual. Um, effort of trying to get information or records from SharePoint, trying to do it in a standardized way, trying to do it in a way um, that can also operate at scale, if you can imagine um, the volumes that the Vermont Archives has to deal with. Um, and of course, this is not exclusive to archives. This is something that um, government records managers um, could also benefit for those records that need to be preserved over the long term. Um, so they may they may be deemed permanent. They may may have a um, many decades of retention, but they don't want to lose access to them, and they and they don't want to um, relinquish custody of them. Uh, and and equally, the archives probably aren't interested in having them either. Um, so <clears throat> there's still the need to preserve those particular records, um, but without uh, and, and there's there's a requirement to have digital preservation for those records. Um, but there's also a, a demand to not bring in perhaps the archives into into that particular group of records. So how do we how do we fix that? So just a quick overview then. So there's um, you know we know that the the volume of users of of Microsoft three sixty five is um, is significantly increasing. Excuse me, let's move this screen out of the way. Uh, is is significantly increasing um, and. For example, in April 2020, um, you know, there were active 75 million Teams users, uh, um, and that had increased 145 million uh, the following year. And by January 22, that had grown to 270 million. So the, the trigger points, as Rick alluded to earlier, you know, big one was um was was the pandemic. Um, but of course, people have stuck with it and, and continued that adoption. Um, so it it's proved its value, it's proved its worth. And because of that, uh, the volumes of information are increasing um, and the, the control challenges are also increasing. The fact that with SharePoint, it is more decentralized, I suppose, when it comes to records management. Um, so we know that the volume is going to continue to grow. Um, it's a virtual tsunami, I suppose, of information. Um, but the portion of content in there, um, as, as we were talking about today, um, those, those long-term and permanent records are incredibly valuable. Um, and they do require that, that uh, specialist um, long-term retention management to ensure that they are safe, secure, uh, readable, discoverable. Um, everything that, um, that uh, your good selves are all um, focused on doing. <clears throat> um, so with Preserve 365, Ultimately, what we're doing is embedding Preservica's active digital preservation uh, inside the Microsoft 365 experience, specifically at the moment in SharePoint. 
Um, that sounds very good. What does it mean? It means that you can um, ensure that those targeted records can be uh, digitally preserved automatically, uh, sorry, tran transferred into a digital preservation repository and automatically preserved over the long term without needing to navigate away from SharePoint, full stop. Um, so that you can, you can in effect, uh, move or copy records into the into a digital preservation repository, uh, all from within SharePoint. And if you want to find those records again, um, you just use SharePoint search. So that's the that's the functional part of when we say uh, bringing it into the Microsoft 365 experience. Right at the very beginning, my my intro included um, talking about how we're trying to make digital preservation as simple and automated as possible. And that is a huge um, uh, um, element of the design of this, because we know that digital preservation is very important. We also know it's highly specialized in many cases, but we know that in order to do this and achieve this at scale across public um, and government institutions, we have to make this as easy as possible for um, for end users, agencies, departments, wherever it may be, and trying to make this as intuitive as possible. And the easiest way to do that is to leverage capabilities that already exist, which is Microsoft 365. Microsoft know what they're doing. So uh, we're plugging into that. Um, and ultimately, it's bringing, I hope, a brand new way to archive and preserve SharePoint lists, libraries, uh, folders and files. Um, additional metadata, which maybe Rick, you could mention, uh, you know, maybe we could talk about that briefly in a minute. So beyond um, the metadata that um, Rick was walking us through, uh, so the additional uh, piece of contextual information. And the last bit, just before I actually show this video that I promised, um, the last part is um, that we, we talk about it in terms of full context preservation. So if you imagine an archive, uh, a, a traditional archive, and you're moving something into the archive, but there is absolutely no uh, digital preservation capability there. So if it is a long term record, there is no guarantee that you'll be able to use and read that um, in, the, in, uh, in the future, um, because although it may be safe and secure, um, readability is not guaranteed. If you think about it in terms of ad hoc preservation, then you have, uh, in effect, if you have an email that has uh, multiple attachments it could be a recording it could be a recording and some documents uh, attached to that email overall that all needs to be retained maybe that's coming from an elected official um, then if you're talking about ad hoc preservation then you're looking at capturing the video preserving that possibly the attachment um, and if you want to the email but they are three disparate things and they are held together separately and ultimately by that, by de deconstructing them, you lose the context. You can't recall them all as one. With Preservica, what we call full context preservation is in effect taking that email and its attachments, ensuring each component, so the email, the video file, and the document are all um, managed over the long term individually so that they can be migrated to the appropriate file format over time. Um, but contextually, they are retained together, so that when you search for that, you can find you can find um, the email and its attachments all um, together. And so uh, that's we find that quite you know particularly important when it comes to the likes of SharePoint, where you have um, folders with multiple parts within it. Um, you've got more complex file formats, those kinds of things. So it's taking, I suppose, the the concept of digital preservation to the next level with something that we call full context preservation. Um, so I'll just, this, this is a, 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 just a very simple explainer. Like I said, it has audio, so I'll just be quiet for a moment. Preserve 365 ensures archived long-term records can be easily found within SharePoint and are always readable. In common with many local government organizations, Spark Hill County has a mandate to retain video recordings of public meetings going back over 30 years. A public records request has been made to retrieve a meeting recording from 1998. The county's records manager has located the file in SharePoint. However, the recording cannot now be played as it was made in a real media video format, which is no longer supported. 
In just three clicks within SharePoint, the file can be copied to Preserve 365 to automatically create and maintain a usable record for as long as required, but without needing to transfer ownership of the record to the archives. Once completed, the preserved video can be watched in the Preserve 365 file view. The file has been automatically converted from an obsolete real media format to a viewable MP4, which can be downloaded and watched locally. Preserve 365 will also maintain the file in the latest viewable format into the future. There we go. Excellent, lovely cheesy music as well. Um, but it, but uh, what you've seen there through that uh, conceptual demonstration is is that all of those activities are occurring within SharePoint. So that manual process of move or copy, um, and it is within three clicks, is moving something over to the digital repository. The retrieval process, was, uh, as demonstrated, you, you can find it against that particular uh, record if it's still within SharePoint, but equally just using the search bar within SharePoint um, because everything that is transferred across is fully indexed. So um, it may not actually be in SharePoint anymore because you've moved that, but you can, if, with the appropriate permissions, if you want to um, find it, then you can you can search for it uh, all within that um, sort of native experience and find uh, and find the record that you want, find that archive file. We talk about bringing um, uh, obsolete formats that may be in, may be migrated into SharePoint back to life, and um, we talk of course about any existing or, uh, or records that are going to be created, ensuring that they have that digital preservation protection. Um, now that is kind of uh, easily demonstrated through that manual process, but we need to be able to do this at scale as well. And Rick mentioned about purview earlier, um, so this plugs and, and integrates with purview labels so in effect if you're if you are in a position at the moment where you are using purview or you're, you're possibly going to be exploring using that then um, as you create your labels as you create that um, file plan within purview um, you can extend that so that at x um, trigger point uh, a record can be moved or copied to the archive which basically means that you can start to automate uh, those transfer processes um, if you so wish. Um, so I know that often there's a there's a control process that you may want to have where you do want to have eyes on. Um, so it could be a simple review and bulk move, manual move or copy, do that in bulk. Um, or you can start thinking about using purview as well. So it goes back to that whole process of trying to make this as as uh, manually, uh, reduce that manual intensity that, that, that uh, Rick was describing and trying to make this as automated as possible. Um, Rick, to pop you on the spot very briefly, so you're, you know, you are in the preview group at the moment for Preserve 365, which um, in a nutshell means that you've got pre-production code and you're testing um, and you're using this. Um, so for just for context, they're not using this within their live archives. This is all within test controlled environments and using test data. Um, but the, the fundamental part is that um, what you're testing now would be rolled out into, um, into production. And that's coming uh, very, very soon. So um, I don't know, Rick, if you just say a few words on your experience of using the, the test environment, um, uh, the, sorry, preview, and um, what that's helped you uh, uh, visualize what you could achieve by using something like this. Yeah, um, it's definitely, <clears throat> sorry. It's definitely uh, looks like it can be very helpful for our, for our automation of our records. Um, our thoughts are we will hopefully be able to, in the future, have agencies who are in charge of um, their own SharePoint libraries where they can they can have a specific library where they'll be able to add records um, that they know are going to be archival uh, into a library that'll have a label, like Gareth's talking about. The library will have a label right on it that'll be able to say, these are archival, they're going to be moved. Um, and when they add these records into the library, um, they're going to have a bunch of columns with a bunch of metadata that, that align with our VT core. And maybe the first five, um, which apply to all the records, will be automatically populated. The records officers won't even have to think about them. They might even be hidden. 
And then they might just have to input a couple things like maybe an ID if there's a case number, um, a date, uh, maybe if there are some contributors. But after that, uh, it'd be entirely automated. Uh, and then we wouldn't have to worry about all that. Um, so I think that 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 will be really helpful when we can get to that stage. Uh, and and then it, hopefully they'll be able to. Well, at some point, this is the idea: is that a, that metadata will come straight over into Preservica into VT Retain, uh, and it'll map directly onto our existing um, VT Core metadata schema, and then that'll display on the the public universal access um, VT retain for people to be able to search that metadata. So all automated. So you've got that, you've got that, hopefully that optimization of the curation part of the pre ingest and then that, that ingest process is that, is that, can you imagine that helping significantly there as well, where you, you, whereas at the moment you've got a big gap between the two systems, you've got a gap where it comes to, digital preservation, potentially agencies have a gap when it comes to digital preservation for record management. Um, uh, sorry, digital preservation for long-term records, but you also have the physical gap where you have to get something from SharePoint across. That's so how true. does how does it help? That, you? Yeah, that's because that's a big process because right now we manually, we have to take everything. Uh, if it's in SharePoint, we're going to have to down, download it from SharePoint uh, onto our network. And then we have to well, add our metadata. And then a whole separate step, we have to upload it into Preservica, um, ingest it through another separate step. So that would eliminate that entire interim process uh, comes straight from SharePoint, which would be a lot faster. Yeah, fantastic, great. Um, so the last the last bit for me, thank you, Rick, for that. Um, mm -hmm. the, last bit, the last bit for me, if I move this other window out of the way. There we go is just to say that if you're interested in finding out more if you um would like to be um involved in the preview um so as as, as i was alluding to there that is in effect getting hands-on with preserve 365 um then head over to preservica.com forward slash preserve 365 uh, and then follow the links to um join the preview group from there um, there's a bit more information on on that website, um, and of course we've got we've got plenty of things that are coming down the line at the moment regarding this. So this is moving very 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 quickly, so do watch this space. Um, but yes, if that is that of interest, then please um, do put yourself there. If you're not interested in actually getting hands on, you're not in a position, but you do want to get um, um, information ahead of time, I suppose, and um, more. Uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm trying to find the right word. More exclusive information, perhaps, shall I say. Um, then still, if you go follow, if you go follow the links to join up, um, there's no obligation to actually get involved, but we will um, add you to our list uh, and make sure that you are um, getting the information ahead of uh, the wider uh, general public. Um, so from me, I'd like to say thank you. I'd like to extend a thank you again to Rick and to the Monster Archives for today for the presentation, and I suppose. This is where I hand back to Lisa um, for Q&A. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Gareth. We appreciate your presentation. Uh, lots of good information there. Um, so now we're at the question and answer portion. So if you have a particular question that you'd like to ask either Rick or Gareth, um, <clears throat> please, you can either raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Or if you want to just type it in chat, we can do it that way too. So while you're deciding if you're going to raise your hand or uh, type in chat, um, I have a question. Are you required to have E5 or E3 plus records management add-on to utilize this application? Uh, the add-on. Yeah, so either you are a, an E5, G5 license holder. Uh, or if you're not, then there is the opportunity for that add-on. In effect, that will give you the um, capabilities to leverage purview. But even without those licenses or that cap those capabilities, you can still leverage that manual um, move copy capability that I was talking about and describing there. So that can still happen at bulk. You know, you can select whole folder structures and files and things. 
but you wouldn't benefit from the um, that greater level of automation that Rick was alluding to. Okay, we've got a question from Jonathan, and he says, first of all, thanks for a great presentation, but can you describe a little more about how Preservica MS365 integration could be used to facilitate the management of active and semi-active records that may ultimately not be transferred for permanent archival storage. Uh, in other words, they may they may ultimately be marked for destruction. Does this combined system um, this combined system manage retention destruction? Uh, his comment is: Our records management and archives units are intricately connected, so a sustainable solution we deploy will need to function well for both our needs. Yeah. So that's a lot, but I'm going to let you pick. It's a lot, apart. but it's a but it's a big area. It's a big topic, and I'm glad. Um, thank you, Jonathan, for raising that because, um, of course, in this context, when you know, we're, we're talking with your with yourselves, then we are looking at that archival transfer, but it, it's also right to talk about those um, other records that, as I was alluding to, may not um, be in the custody of the of the archives, but still obviously require that level of um, digital preservation. So um, those that have uh, will be marked for destruction at some point in the future based on the retention schedule, then we preserve through six, five, uh, as you move or copy that record across, then it takes the retention information with it um, so that you can, in effect, identify uh, records that are in the repository that are uh, deemed for destruction based on that retention schedule. So whatever is applied um, in Microsoft uh, is reflected in uh, Preservica. I think, I hope, it's drawn in a, a, a short summary to that question. Okay, cool. he's just, thank you. He's, there you <laughs> thank go. You, Good. Excellent. Um, one other question. Can Preserve 365 be pointed to other repositories like Teams? That is the that is the plan. Um, SharePoint is a big one to tackle, so that's why we've gone there first. Um, and lots of lots of different moving parts as, as part of this project. But next next on the roadmap, uh, and the team, uh, our product, our uh, team. At the moment, the Preserve 365 team are actively um, working on the team side of things. It is the Wild West. The teams is the Wild West. I'm sure many people would probably agree with that. I think lots of organizations have completely different opposing ways that they want to manage it. Everything is unique in that respect. Um, so uh, we are making sure we do our due diligence um, with that before we... Uh, before we commit any code. So we're focusing on SharePoint first, but Teams is next in line because um, that is a big one as well. All right, thank you, Gareth. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions right now, but if you do have questions, of course, offline, you can reach out to Gareth or Rick and they'll be happy to uh, try to help you with, with at least their understanding of the situation. So let's go on to the next slide. So I hope you've enjoyed. Um, oh, and this was a, this was an old slide. So unfortunately, um, but watch for the new schedules for Sari and the uh, member webinar slides next. And of course, you can always reach out to contact COSA in any one of these major ways. And last. We want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, there may or may not be an evaluation. And if there's not, uh, we still always welcome your feedback. Uh, if you aren't able to watch this live, we hope that you enjoyed watching the, the uh, playback on our YouTube channel. And with that, uh, any last comments, Rick or Gareth? I'll leave the last word with you, Rick. I uh, just want to <laughs> say thanks for the opportunity. It was great. Great talking with you and talking a little bit about how we do things here in Vermont and hope to do them in the future with Preservica. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much. And with that, everyone, thank you for joining us today for Shop Talk with Preservica. And we hope we'll see you again at a future webinar or Shop Talk. And we hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll see you soon at the next COSA webinar. Thank you so much.